now that my uh, passenger side headlight is a air scoop for my UMP filter. <laughs> it's all just really old stuff. Hey guys, it's Amy and I'm here with one of my good friends, Mac. Mac, where are you? I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're hanging out at Fiesta Island and we're gonna go over Mac's Ranger build. It's a uh, 1994 Ford Ranger. I think it's an XLT. It's got too much stuff done to it at this point. What got you into all this desert shenanigan stuff? Honestly, YouTube and uh, seeing like some of the old videos from uh, all the old Mexico trophy truck racing and stuff like that. And then uh, I had eventually gotten a, uh, what I liked to call a pre-runner at the time, but now with more knowledge I know isn't really quite the, the case. But that, that truck got me into it. And then I, uh, I unfortunately had a, a pretty bad accident uh, in that truck. That's a spicy meatball. Eventually ended up with uh, with this. Well, the start to this. So we always go out to Ocotillo Wells as a group, as a friend group, and Mac absolutely rips this thing. Are you excited to go out again? Are you nervous? How are you feeling about new desert season? Yeah, I'm definitely very stoked for the next uh, upcoming desert season. The last time we had it ready was speed metal, and that was a really fun event. Just you know, it wasn't long enough for me, so I wish I got to do some more driving. The last trip I had this out, uh, we didn't do too well. I uh, had it out at King of the Hammers and it ran for approximately 10 minutes before I ended up having a grounding issue. We ended up driving it at uh, Speed Metal just this year. Had a really good time, blasted the whoops, had a really good time set sometimes on the desert course. Yeah. Um, put on a pretty good show for some of the people that were looking for the leaf sprung trucks, little underbuilt trucks. So it was definitely a good time. Yeah, leaf spring parties, all right. That's a leaf sprung truck right there. That's a man's truck. <laughs> And you've had this truck for how I've had long? It for, I've had it for four years now. The first year I had spent just sitting in the garage, uh, torn apart. I wasn't comfortable with how it was built when I had originally bought it. So we tore everything art, everything apart, did uh, the works to it. I ended up going with chromoly knuckles. I left the beams how they were because they were good enough. I added uh, single swing steering. I added a bypass to the front of it. In general, just beefed up the front end of the truck just to make it a little more capable. I love Rangers and any off-road Ranger I'm in love with. So it's like, what's different about, is there anything different about your truck other than other Rangers or is it? One of the things that sets it apart is maybe the brakes and the knuckles and just the fact that it's I-beam. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good way to get into uh, some higher travel numbers for a little bit cheaper than some of the other kits. Um, although if you want to go fast, you're going to pay to, you're going to pay to play. That's just the, the name of the game. It's a, it's a generally pretty mild build other than a couple of parts here and there with like the hubs just to make it so I, you know, don't chew through some of the general Ranger parts that people have issues with. So I'm sure you're all wondering what setup he has on this Ranger. The front setup. The front uh, setup. Perfect. So for this, it's got a uh, Camberg four and a half inch uh, unequal length beam setup accompanied by some uh, BD Designs chromoly knuckles. Uh, converts it all to uniball, makes it a lot stronger. I'm able to run an F-150 four wheel drive hub on there. Uh, gives it a little bit bigger wheel bearing. I've got that set up with some single swing steering just because it's an unequal length setup. So that accounts for some of the bump steer that you get as the cycle of the travel. You get what's called bump steer. And so the tires will actually go toe in or toe out depending on where they are in the travel. So with the single swing steering, it adjusts the geometry to help with that a little bit. Yeah, uh, and I'm curious because I want to know, what shock size is this? So it's a pretty small shock size. It's just a 2.5 inch diameter by 14 inch coilover and bypass. Um, I'm just running a three tube pre-runner series bypass, so nothing fancy. It's all relatively, in quotes, cheap shocks. Although, again, nothing is, nothing is cheap in this sport, so. They're all used parts that I uh, didn't spend very much money on or spent as, as little money as I could on uh, just to get me going. And uh, since I spent the money on the name brand parts, I'm able to just keep using them year after year I've, while I take care of them. Yeah, hopefully, I think those last really long, I hope, right? Yeah. The shocks. <laughs> they last about a season, season and a half, and then uh, with how much I drive it, and then I have to end up rebuilding them. Yeah, exactly. It's all dependent upon everybody's vehicle. What fiberglass you got going here? So this is a Hanneman six inch front fender. I got these for like 150 bucks on a marketplace deal. 
but marketplace seems like the way to go because I've seen a lot of people pull up with some cool stuff and I'm like, where'd you get that? They're like 50 bucks Facebook. I'm like, oh, cool. Oh, 100%. Marketplace is a great place to buy uh, used pre-runner parts. Uh, there's a lot of different Facebook groups and uh, forums that you can go into to both ask questions and get better help with how to build your truck or even welding. Facebook's a great, a great platform for uh, information and, and buying and selling things uh, for your truck. Cool. What type of wheels are these? I have never seen these before. Uh, these are a Vision Manx 15 inch wheel. Uh, they're a fake beadlock, but these are actually the original wheels and tires off of the first truck I had that I ended up uh, getting a wreck in in Octeo. Somehow it, they it survived happens. and so far they haven't let me down on this truck. So Yeah, I stoked. like them. They're like kind of old school looking almost. A little bit. Yeah, they're cool. All right, let's go over the rear. Uh, in the rear, uh, I'm running a little more mild setup. It's still uh, spring over. I'm still running leaf springs. Uh, I've got a 3.0 uh, 4.2 brace series bypass shock in the rear, uh, and that helps soak up some of the bumps. Uh, with the rear and it's still being leaf sprung, I definitely have found that I need to run the bigger shock for it to really do anything. I'm sure people find out the hard way on that one because it yeah. doesn't feel too good, right? Well, the two fives, they what I found is they just get too hot. Uh, okay. With cycling too much, with I mean cycling so much in the rear end, um, especially with all the small chatter, they're just really not happy with it. Um, but with these three O's, I haven't had an issue so far. And I mean, other than having to rebuild them every once in a while, they're, they're really good. I ended up adding a, uh, hydraulic bump stop recently, uh, over the past, I think it was a couple Where's of seasons that? ago. It's Where's this, uh, hydraulic bump stop right here. So I added that a couple of seasons ago and, uh, that definitely made a huge difference in my ability to drive it. Uh, cause it was definitely very unforgiving. It would buck really hard. And so the rear end would come way up into the sky and I'd be staring at the floor. And when it came down, it would, without the bump stops, it would buck really hard again. And that was in part due to my shock tuning and just the fact that it didn't have any good bump stops. So if after... you've ex ever experienced that exact feeling he just said, it is horrifying. <laughs> it's very scary. And you're it's kind so... of just at the mercy of the truck. Yeah. And there's nothing that you can do about it other than you're staring at the floor, hoping to God it does not keep going. <laughs> yeah. You... You can't tap the brakes. If you tap the brakes, you're just gonna go over. And I mean, you tap the gas pedal, it's not gonna do anything. So but. usually on Rangers, like the most I've, like out of all the Rangers I've kind of seen, most of the gas tanks are like right where your spare tire is. Is there, where, where's yours and where's it? Mine's underneath it. I've just got a smaller, uh, it's gotcha. a stock fuel tank out of a Bronco two. Um, just with how they originally built the truck, they had built it to pass emissions, which was really nice at the time. But uh, according, for the EPA, it does still pass emissions and it's not modified in any way illegally. You sure about that? You sure about that? It has a uh, Bronco 2 fuel cell so that it has a stock Ranger fuel pump and passes all of the California emissions just because that's kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. And are these the same size shocks that are in the front or did you switch them up? No, these are bigger. So these are a three inch diameter. Um, they're the same stroke. They're a 14, which is a little bit on the shorter side for a, especially a leaf sprung setup, but they, uh, They've managed to get the job done. They haven't let me down so far. Yeah, it does exactly what you want it to do, yeah. kind of. Yeah, I've been very happy with it. And how much travel do you have in the front? In the front, I'm pulling about uh, 21 bumped and strapped. It pulls 23 metal to metal, although it's very unhappy with that. Yeah, so that's, we... <laughs> that's pushing. It pulls 23, but is it happy? Yeah, no. it, <laughs> it pulls uh, 21 happily. And then in the rear, it is very disproportionate. It pulls like 16 inches of travel. So in the rear end, I've got a off the shelf Curry nine inch that um, I unfortunately made the stupid mistake of welding over it to put the truss on, but uh, it does have a stamp under there. It was originally a drum brake. I ended up converting that to disc brake because I wasn't so happy with the stopping power. So now I've got matching Willwood brakes all the way around, including the master cylinder. So it's got a full system on it. Uh, stops on a dime when I want it to. That's cool. I love the, I love these builds a lot. It's a lot of fun. It is fun. All right, so now we're gonna check out the inside of Max truck. So it's a pretty mild setup. Uh, it's just got a roll cage. It's like a homemade roll cage. Um, does so you, you did this yourself? No, uh, the previous owner did all of the tube work. Oh, gotcha, uh, I've gotcha. done just pretty much everything, nut and bolt, and uh, a lot of like the plate work welding, just fixing some of the stuff where they uh, made some mistakes in their building process. Okay, and what type of, what radio, how's this work? Uh, so I've got a PCI, a race radio and intercom setup. Uh, it's just the, 
the basic car to car radio and intercom setup. It's these nice. Are, these are pretty popular, right? The yeah. setup you got They're going? They're definitely a very important thing, especially out in the desert. If you're running around with friends, you definitely need some way to communicate between you and other people. Um, especially with our friends, we like to go do a lot of jumping. And uh, a lot of the times we're hitting something where we can't see the other side of it. So it's definitely important to have somebody be able to tell you, stop, there's somebody at the other side of the jump. So. Yeah, you don't want to learn the hard way. And the harnesses are crows. These are old school ish, really right? Really old. None of it's race legal, but it, you know, it'll hold me in in the event of a crash, so. Exactly. It's all just really old stuff. Through time, it'll get swapped out for nice newer stuff, but like I said, for now, it does the job. <laughs> Tell me about the whole lighting setup you got going here and the intakes, whatever we didn't cover. Um, so in the front end, uh, it had originally a three HID light rack. I didn't really like that setup and the lights were broken. So I ended up cutting that off, let this tube sit in the garage for years and then uh, finally got around to it. But I uh, picked up some Baja design so I could actually see at night since I've only got one headlight now that my uh, passenger side headlight is a air scoop for my UMP filter. <laughs> So I needed some uh, needed some light, so I got hooked up with some Baja designs from a good friend, and uh, I ended up just reusing that light rack. Now it's really nice and removable, and have a good time. So that is basically it that we covered Max full full run round of Max truck, and hopefully everyone liked it. If you have questions, comments, feel free to reach out. Hopefully we'll see you all at Hell Track. You too. I'll be there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.